All right, we got a lot to cover this uh, this morning with you. We're going to bring in our powerhouse panel first with the vice president of the Commonwealth Foundation and fellow at the Independent Women's Forum, Jennifer Stefano, and Project 21 National Advisory Board member, Christopher Arps. Happy Saturday, panel. Happy Saturday. Congratulations, Tom. Oh, thank you very much. All right, we're going to dive right in. Merrick Garland was on the hot seat this week. He says, it's nothing to see here, folks. The Department of Justice isn't trying to chill the speech rights of parents. Congressman Jim Jordan, though, he wasn't buying it so much. Take a listen. Here's what the October 4th memo said. Quote, I'm directing the FBI to convene meetings with local leaders. These meetings will open dedicated lines of communication for threat reporting. Dedicated lines of communication for threat reporting. A snitch line on parents started five days after a left-wing political organization asked for it. That's not political. I don't know what is. Jennifer, I want to go to you first. What did you make of, uh, of this testimony and the way that the attorney general handled himself this week? Uh, the, the, the Department of Justice with the collusion of the White House are showing a horrific abuse of power. And this is why people had concerns about the Patriot Act way back after 9-11. There was a number of people, um, often called unpatriotic, but who said that the Patriot Act was a problem, that it would eventually turn from going after um, foreign terrorists to be turned on the American people. And now we're seeing how that's being done. And I think this is an enormous problem that the White House is absolutely seeking to stifle speech of their political opposition and that there should be far more outrage and concern from the legacy media who is once again not doing their job. Yeah, they're totally yeah. MIA on this. Chris, I, I want to go to you. He, he over and over, he tried to suggest that he's really an independent operator. And yet uh, the panelists and members of Congress, and I think from both sides actually said, well, you know, it, it, it does seem like every time, you know, the White House wants to talk about something or wants to make an issue of something, five days later, Department of Justice is taking action. What what did you make uh, about his claims of being an independent operator? I think those claims are totally false. And the big story within this story is that Merrick Garland's son-in-law is involved in the CRT race hustling business. Um, right. His son-in-law makes millions of dollars potentially um, selling CRT curriculum materials uh, to these school districts. And I don't think it's a coincidence that all of a sudden um, this has gotten on Merrick Garland and the Justice Department's radar screen. Yeah. You know, I want to play the, uh, the, the sound bite from the hearing specifically on this issue because Garland seemed to be more defensive on, on that point yeah. than really anything else. Take a listen. Why would you not submit to a simple ethics review of that? I am exquisitely aware of the ethics requirements. But you're not following them. I have followed them and lived with them for the last 25 years. Did you seek an ethics review of this or not? I'm going to say again, there are no conflicts of interest involved when the Justice Department... Okay, okay. According to you... All right. Now, look, Allison, I don't know if he broke... Any, any laws right. here, okay? I don't know the ethics requirements, but there is at least a very strong appearance of impropriety with his son-in-law making millions of dollars driving this, these, these leftist training programs for, for teachers. Yeah. Is this something that, that is a big winning issue for Republicans that they can continue to oh, hammer on? absolutely. So you mentioned millions. So this, his son-in-law's uh, company has gotten $27 million from schools across the country. I think it was uh, 1,500 schools have used his curriculum. That would be taxpayer dollars, right, too, right? Right, So we have this curriculum, uh, you know, that's in these schools. And then all of a sudden, he releases this memo saying, okay, if you're a parent um, and you're speaking out, you could be a domestic terrorist. We want the FBI. FBI uh, to re to look into you. So it just it doesn't it doesn't smell right. And this is going to be a big problem for him. And he didn't really like, deny it. He's just he danced. He danced yeah. around the entire day. He didn't have answers for a lot of questions. Uh, he's basically he didn't even know what happened at the Department of Interior. Right. He, he just. Yeah. You know, I don't so know how, how, yeah, how you could. How you could not know that people were arrested right. trying to break into, you know, these leftist activists are trying to break into the Department of the Interior, yeah. and, he, and he didn't know. You know, Chris, do you think that Republicans missed an opportunity here to really press on why the DOJ isn't focused on things like urban violence, which is claiming the lives of, uh, of, of minorities in city, by, by the hundreds all across America? 
Yeah, I, th- I think that is a big opportunity. You know, here in, in St. Louis, um, crime is out of control. Chicago, all over the nation, and we don't see the the administration really talking about that. Yeah. Um, you see, African American congressmen, they're talking about voting rights bills and bills of that nature, but the uh, the uh, issues that are really affecting their constituents in their homes is crime, and it's out of control. And you see silence uh, within the Democratic Party. I want to just, I've only got about a minute left, but speaking of race, Chris, President Biden again this week driving his divisive racial agenda by bringing up white supremacy again, out of all things, an MLK event. Please take a listen. You know, there's a tough through line of subjugation and enslaved people from our earliest days to the reigns of radicalized terror, the KKK, to Dr. King being assassinated. And through that, though that line continues to be the torches emerging from dark shadows in Charlottesville, carrying out Nazi banners and chanting anti-Semitic bile and Ku Klux Klan flags, and the violent, deadly insurrection on the Capitol nine months ago. It was about white supremacy, in my view. Chris, I want to come back to you, and I really just have just about 15 seconds for sure. you. Um, I just want to get your quick take on, again, more of this divisive rhetoric coming from the president. I think we're hearing this divisive rhetoric because members of the Congressional Black Caucus and other black leaders have been criticizing this administration because they feel that their uh, concerns have not been addressed. I think this was just a bone to throw out to them. And and I also think that it has to do with trying to drive out black votes in Virginia Mm -hmm. and, and New Jersey coming up. All right. Thanks to our panel. We're going to see you in the next hour.